Right then, it feels like winter today. Minus one. Frost on the van, frost on the ground. Quarter past six in the morning at the moment. There's no other cars in the car park, which I'm absolutely amazed about. Through the uh, really annoying style. I absolutely hate this thing. It is so... It almost seems so pointless. Feels like it's warming up already. Right then, rod number one. We need to try and get it nice and tight on that far bank up along that nice snaggy tree line. further than that. Boom. This is the rig going out then. So I've got some weighted tungsten tubing, a standard quarter hybrid leg clip with a um, ring swivel, three ounce lead, I've got probably six inches of ESP tungsten loaded. I've got a loop in the end of it, which I basically pass the rig through and double it over. Acts as a little bit of an extra boom and just makes it quick change, but then gives me the flexibility of the ring. I've got a little weighted bead, which I actually need to move a little bit further back. So that is then further the bead goes closer to the lead than it does to the hook and that means that that section basically should drop to the bottom first which helps push the rig away I've then got my little chod section, uh, my Ronnie section and then a little oily bag on there as well so we'll flick this one over there hopefully I've clipped it up okay here we go Yeah, perfect. Snag fishing out, I wanted to show the rod set up. It is really, really important. So what I've got here then is, I've got my two rods, I've cast them out. They're out on the spot against the snag. Now I never fish right up against snags. I will always fish slightly off of them. That gives you a little bit of give then when you get a bite that you've got room to um, get to the rod before the fish can get into the snags. So I'm fishing a tight clutch so the fish can't really take any line. Um, on the back of the rod, I've got a peg as a rod rest. That is so that it holds the rods down to the ground. The fish can't rip that out the ground and take the rod, basically. So it's nice and solid. It is probably the, the most solid way I know of securing a back of a rod rest, um, a back of a rod to the ground when snag fishing. It's really, really solid, and um, it's probably the best option you've got. There's a lot of good bank sticks out there, a lot of good buck rips out there, but at the end of the day, a peg nailed to the back of the rod is always going to be the best option. I've then got two single sticks. The reason I'm using two singles is on the, when they're separate, they're more stable. So if I was using a little buzzer bar, it's not going to be as strong as fishing two individual bank sticks. If you've got one bank stick per rod, that is always going to have the most strength um, than fishing any other option. If you add like a buzz bar set up, um, it's, it's just there's options for it to twist basically. Whereas with this, it's one stick, it can't move, it's in the ground nice and solid. That is the best way of fishing um, across the snags. Now, a lot of people fish with like snag ears and things like that. Now, in this situation, I don't need it. I'm fishing straight across. I'm directly opposite the snags. And that, again, is really important. So the snags are over on the far bank. I'm fishing directly opposite them. If I was fishing slightly to the, to the side on a different angle, then the snag ears may come into play in that situation. But when you're fishing opposite, that is the best situation you can be in because you've got a direct line to those fish. So when you get a bite, what I will do is pick up the rod and I will walk backwards and I will basically pull the fish away from those trees into open water where I can then play them nice and safely. So that's essentially how I snag fish. Now I'll just put that left hand rod out so I'm going to just put the bobbin on. 
bobbin is on. And I'm gonna turn on the alarm. Job done. Now, the alarms are on the most sensitive they can be. So the smallest bit of movement, I'm gonna know um, my end. So you want the bite alarm's nice and sensitive. You want a nice solid setup. So as soon as you get a bite, you get some indication and you get straight on the rod. And you wanna be, you want to be on the rods as quick as possible. If you get any sort of indication, you want to be straight on the rods and um, hopefully lifting into a fish. And like I said, you walk backwards, put the pressure on it and just get it into open water. Then you can sort of loosen off the drag and give the fish a little bit of line and actually play them like you normally would. But initially, you just need to get them away from the danger and get them into some open water where you can play them nice and safely. So that's how I do it. I've, I've done a lot of snag fishing over the years and um, yeah, it's a very, very important thing. You need to look at your setup. When you're fishing against snags, it's not just a case of using the same old thing. You have to fish in a, a suitable way with a suitable setup, otherwise you will lose fish. I hear about so many people getting smashed up, losing fish in the snags. And it's like, well, if you're not using the correct gear for it, you're obviously gonna lose fish. Welcome to a new video, we're back on a bank and you join me on the old estate lake. I've come out for a very short morning session and would you believe I'm out on a weekend. I never fish weekends and um, the missus has given me a green light to get out this morning and um, come out for a few hours and can't, can't refuse, can you? You've got to go out and have a go. Now, I don't normally fish the weekends because it is busy, but would you believe I rocked up this morning about 50 minutes after it opened and there was an empty car park. I've currently got the lake to myself. The rods are out fishing. Everything is good. I mean, I can't believe it. I'm, on a, I'm fishing on a weekend and there is no one on the lake. So very, very unusual, but we have had a very, very cold start. There's actually minus one this morning at a de-iced van. It is literally spring. I have no idea what's going on with this weather, but at the end of the day, I'm fishing. I got some rods out. Let's see if it happens, but um, yeah. I'm very confident of a bite today. It's definitely going to start warming up. The sun's already starting to push through. So hopefully it's going to warm up a bit before we have to get going and we can have ourselves um, a fish or two. So the rods are fishing. I'm going to get the kettle out, put a brew on, try and have a bit of breakfast and hopefully I get disturbed by a bite. So I knew it was going to be cold this morning. Not as cold as it's turned out, but I knew it was meant to be fresher. So I bought the cold weather gas, performance gas. It burns a lot easier in um, colder conditions. So you get a quicker brew. So I've been watching the water since I've got the rods out. I've been fishing about 45 minutes now. I've not seen anything really that exciting to sort of um, give me an indication of where the fish are. I have had a little bit of a liner on the right hand rod, so that's a nice indication. So potentially there's some fish out that way and looking around, maybe picking up a few of the free offerings. But um, if I see anything, I will no doubt move a rod to it if I do see a show and um, make the most of what I see. But for the time being, I'm just enjoying my coffee. I've got a bit of breakfast on the go. I'm gonna have an egg wrap with a bit of cheese. And um, yeah, let's polish that off in a second. And um, hopefully one of those rods does go rattling off and we can have a fish in the video. Oh, that might've been so much as shown out there. Don't know if that was a silver or, um, or not then. Yeah, it didn't look that big, but um, yeah, let's hope someone gives itself away and um, we can have one. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of bait out. I thought I'd just show you what I'm using. So I'm using 12 millers, and these are um, basically a 50-50 split of DNA bug and DNA switch. The bug is my all-round, um, all-year bait. Absolutely love it. And the switch is something I tend to use in the colder months. Now, um, we are in the spring now, but the water is still relatively cold. So what I like to do is still introduce quite a bit of that in my mix. I'm using it 50-50 today as it is a really good attractive bait in the colder months when the water's cold it breaks down really nicely it's got a lo lovely little spiciness to it 
and it um, marries up really well with the DNA bug. So I'm literally going to put probably that out, nice little handful, fire it across to the far side. I am really surprised nothing's happened at the moment. I genuinely thought I would have had a, a quickish bite, but it was very cold overnight. So snag fishing then, when you're snag fishing, um, you want to be using really, really strong tackle um, and a really solid rod setup. Strong tackle, um, main line, I'd be looking at sort of 0.35 to 0.40, at least 15 pound above. Um, I'm actually using 18 pound today. Um, the heavier the diameter, the less chance you are of getting cut off if the line does go across any debris, any snags or branches or anything like that. So yeah, the heavier and the thicker the line you can get away with, the better. At the end of the day, you might not catch as many fish using a big, thick, heavy line. Um, it does stand out a lot, but if you do get that bite, you're definitely going to land the fish. And that's what you need to remember, that you're better off landing the fish and not getting as many bites than getting loads of bites and losing them all in the snags. So um, yeah, nice strong line. Um, again, nice strong rigs, um, nice heavy sort of rigs, um, nothing too light. Um, I use at least sort of 20 to 25 pound hook lengths, nice size sort of four hooks. Um, so it's all nice and strong. Um, a lot of the stuff that most of us probably use in our everyday fishing is probably gonna be strong enough to be fair for most situations, unless the snags are absolutely brutal. But um, yeah, that's what I tend to use. Um, I always use a lead um, eject system. I tend to use a lead clip setup because that's what I prefer. Something where the lead's either going to eject on the tape or it can discharge if it does get caught up in anything. And then in terms of your rod setup, you just want a really solid setup. So ideally single bank sticks, some sort of lockdown back rod rests, um, some sort of tie downs that basically hold the rod in the rest or like I'm using today I'm actually using a peg on the back of the rods um, to hold them down which is probably the best and most secure system you're going to be able to use um, but yeah something that keeps it nice and solid um, use your indicators on the highest sensitivity they can use a tight line when you're fishing to your snag the tightest line you can get use a nice big bobbin so any movement you're going to get um, registered on the indicator and um, sit nice and close to the rods if you're far away from the rods the chances are the fish is going to get into the snag before you've got on the rods so you want to sit nice and close to the rods so you can jump on them as quick as possible and then um in terms of when you do get a bite, it is literally hit and hold. You want the bait runner locked up nice and tight. You don't want the fish to be able to take any line. And when you get that bite, you want to pick the rod up and try and walk backwards and pull that fish away from those snags into open water where you can then play them nice and safely. So it's pretty simple really, but there's a few little points there that you need to take, um, take from this. And keep in mind, if you haven't snag fished before, it's about um, keeping everything as strong as possible and fishing as safely as you can. So hopefully you found that interesting. And um, at some point, I might actually get a bite. Right, well, I've just recast one of the rods. Um, I've brought what was the left hand rod in and now switched it over to the right hand side and I've dropped it in the margin on my right hand side of the swim. And the reason for that is I actually saw fish show and I thought I can't ignore that. So I've reeled that rod in quick. I've chucked it out to the right hand side just with a little mesh bag on the, on the Ronnie, on the Slipty Ronnie and just sort of lowered it down, nice drop. And so I've just sort of fished it semi-slack, like let a little bit of line out to sort of let it settle a little bit of slack. So it's um, hopefully not going to spook any fish if they go into the line. And um, I'll see if that happens. I was obviously aiming to do a video about snag fishing, but at the end of the day, fishing is about opportunity. And if you see an opportunity and you see something like that, you shouldn't really be ignoring it. So I've obviously brought that rod in 
put a rod on it and if that ends up doing a bite then happy days so anyway we see how this rest of the session goes got a few more hours to go so i still feel like i'm going to get a bite so um yeah we'll just see how the session pans out and keep watching the water keep being active and trying to make something happen <laughs> Right then, I'm back at the van. I've got all the kit loaded up. I've had to cut the session short, unfortunately. Loads of people have turned up. If you look at the um, car park, there's a few cars there. There's one tucked around the side of that one as well. And there's plenty of cars along here. There's one tucked over there. So um, the car park is pretty much full at the moment. You're not gonna get many more cars in here. And um, the lake was getting really busy. And unfortunately, a couple of guys got opposite me cut me off from the snag I was fishing across to. At the end of the day, it's, it's fishing, isn't it? It happens. Um, so I was kind of at a loss, really. And all, and seeing as I'm got, uh, I've only got sort of the morning, I'm off, obviously, to spend the afternoon with the family, I thought I might as well cut the session a little bit shorter than planned and just get out of the way and let people crack on with their days fishing. So there were a couple of guys to my left having a bit of a social. They were making quite a lot of noise. It's always awkward with the filming. Now, I'm not complaining. At the end of the day, they're out enjoying their day more than um, more than happy to see people doing that but in, from my perspective it's obviously frustrating for me trying to film and create content so at the end of the day filming when it when you're out on a saturday on a busy lake is always tricky so um at the end of the day it's, it's my own fault really but anyway it was nice to get out on the bank hopefully the tips that i've put into the video were useful and have um you know something you can put into your own fishing um snag fishing is very very productive it hasn't been today i just think it's one of those days isn't it but anyway thanks for watching the channel if you like it give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're new and until next time get out there be lucky and i'll see you in the next video boom